Hello friends, welcome back and hello if you are new. Today I am so excited to take you guys on a tour of my fully decorated Dreamlight Valley. This video has been quite a while in the making because it actually took me longer to decorate everything than any Animal Crossing Island ever has. So I am so excited to take you guys on a tour of all my Dreamlight Valley builds. As you can see, Goofy is very excited, so let's get straight into it. Now, I thought it would be good to start off with the plaza and then walk you through all the different areas I've decorated. So right away, we have this cute little garden that sits in the middle of my plaza and it's a good place to put the flowers and the fountain and it also creates this really nice view coming down from the main castle. As you can see, I've also created this little blocked off area behind the hedge here that really is just for looks, but it's got the fountain and the little pool that you can get in Scrooge's shop. So it creates a kind of water feature, which I think is really nice to have overlooking the restaurant. We've also got a little outside seating area just outside the restaurant and there's a grand piano to really set the mood with some music. I've put the restaurant and Remy's house together which I know a lot of people have done because these buildings are actually the nicest in the game. They look so good together. But I really wanted to give it that nice romantic kind of Lady and the Tramp Disney vibe. So I've got some meals laid out on the tables here for two as well. Now moving on but keeping to the left side of my plaza, if you go up towards the castle and to the left over here, you will find an outdoor public pool. As soon as I saw the swimming pool item could be crafted, I knew like even if it took <laughs> like heaps of materials, I needed to have it like somewhere at least once. And then as soon as those glowing palm trees showed up in my store, like that's how this area was born, that was it. We also have a little bar over here. You can get some ice cream. There's little ice cream carts behind there. Continuing over to the right side of my plaza, we have kind of another little stall here. I wanted to do it kind of like lots of little shops. So we're gonna call this a coffee shop and it's using all the hot cocoa stands from the Christmas event. And of course the main attraction, Scrooge's store, which I have bought all the clothes, all the clothes that are available because I have a shopping problem. So we put those little palm tree banners in front because I saw someone said it on Facebook and I thought that's a great idea to hide the empty windows. But that is all for the first part of the plaza. It all kind of feels like the plaza because I guess that's how I've done it. But now we're heading into the meadow and we have this nice little walkway that will lead you directly out to the front of the beach. And yes, it took all the patience I have to craft all those flowers, but I think it was worth it. Let me know what you think. Also, I couldn't really figure out a way to make Ariel's home look that nice, like on the beach. So what I've done is kind of put it off in the distance so it makes a nice view when you walk out to this main beach area here. You've got this little lounging area with the blankets and the tables and mostly I just wanted an excuse to cover up the grass there. The random patches of ground really kind of bug me. Anybody else? I also didn't really feel like making a camping area with the RV that they gave us for Buzz. So instead he now runs an ice cream truck. So there you go, I also gave him a job. So he can thank me, you're welcome. We get one last nice view of the beach because I think it looks nicer here. And then we're gonna head up and continue exploring the rest of the meadow. I almost went to say plaza again because I've kind of made it all city core-ish but like a tropical city core over here. Tell me you're an Animal Crossing player without telling me you're an Animal Crossing player. Anyway, over to the left side of the meadow here we have the two little stalls and I've kind of fenced in this little pond because I didn't really like the natural feel it was giving it so I just kind of went and did my own thing. This is a smoothie bar. Get ready to see a lot of these little gazebos, by the way, because they're like my favorite item ever. Even though they take ages to craft and it's so frustrating. I just love the little lights when it turns on at night and you can use them for so many little buildings that aren't buildings. I also put Woody's carousel here because I thought it looked really pretty in the view. If we head back up and over the stairs to the right side, left side, 
I guess. Depends which way you're facing. Um, I forget what these are called, but I was very thankful when I got them in my store because um, it was a very easy way to kind of join everything together. And I think it looks really pretty in screenshots still, so I can still take pretty little photos of my valley. Ooh, sunshine. And that means we're getting close to Stitch's house. I thought this location kind of keeps it close to the beach still, and also it looks really good across from the carousel, in my opinion. So Stitch has his own little hideaway over here, close to the beach. He's got his surfboards and guitar, and really still got that tropical Hawaiian feel. So it can feel like home, you know? Next, we're going to continue walking up and to the right to go and see the forest. Now, the forest is one of the areas that I decorated last, but I'm still really happy with it. So I can't wait to show you guys. We've got this nice little path with all the little mushroom rocks, which I thought was just very fitting. And here we have a little pathway over to Merlin's house. We have a little feature garden in the middle of it all with the fountain and the gazebo, of course, because they always look so pretty together. Most of my paths are outlined with the rocks, kind of like how you can make them turn, that little trick. But um, this one is not outlined the whole way around because I hit the item limit. So I did find a few ways to kind of cheat the system with that. So let me know if you want a video on that as well. But at this point, I was very over the item limit, like really. Like if I had placed anything else, probably the game wouldn't have let me in again. So we'll just pretend it goes all the way around. Now the path continues over the bridge and over to the left here we have, see I like to think of it as like the little birthday scene from Winnie the Pooh, but you could also take it as Mad Hatter's Tea Party if you're more of an Alice in Wonderland fan. Either way, it keeps to the Disney theme. I also had a lot of fun baking all of the desserts you see on the table here, and I love that we can use them to decorate. If you don't already know, when you cook something in the game, you can choose to drop it, and then you can move it around just like a furniture item, so you can place it on tables and things like that, which I love. Continuing into the Frosted Heights, we have this beautiful little snowy city. For the longest time, I couldn't decide whether to have my actual shops in the plaza or in the Frosted Heights. So I did end up choosing the plaza, but I've made all these little stores myself. So first up, we have a little bookstore over here. And I've used the frozen bookcases to kind of make the walls of this one and also a couple others. We have a main little Christmas tree set up kind of in the middle of everything, kind of like a main little square. And no, I will not be taking it down even though it's not Christmas anymore. Also kind of separated off with the same bookshelves, we have a little toy store. I love the giant blocks from the Toy Story realm, so I knew I had to use them somewhere. We will call this shop a little coffee shop because I put the little coffee carts in it. So just pretend that one's not the hot cocoa stand. Thank you. And over here we have a stall that you can actually buy things from. And I've kind of set up my apple trees around there, but everything is fully accessible as well. Over here we have the actual hot cocoa stands or like a little bakery or a chocolate shop or whatever you want to call it. Basically I went through the dessert recipes and baked the ones that looked the best and put them here. And straight across from there we have possibly my favourite. We have a little spa cabin and a cute little seating area by the fire so that the villagers can take a girls trip up to the frosted heights and have a bit of relaxation. Goofy needs a girls trip too every once in a while. And then we continue up the path over here and you know those, I forget what they're called, but they're like the, the glowing thingies that you haven't like unlocked yet because we haven't had the update. I like to close them in so you can't see them because they're ugly. This area is a little bit more bare, but I kind of wanted to do a nice simple little igloo snowy area. We've got the sled over there. Um, and it really reminds me of that snow area in at the end of Monsters Inc. Um, it's been a while since I've watched it, but you know, same kind of feeling. So we'll say this is a little Monsters Inc. Um, reference. 
We'll continue back through the Frosted Heights and over here. Look how pretty this little walkway looks with the trees and the well as well. Um, and then I'll take you over to the castle. Now, I think this is meant to be Anna's house if you're following the story, but um, we'll say it's Elsa's frozen castle because that's what it looks like to me. But a bit of a change of pace, let's head to the beach. Now, I've left a lot of my beaches kind of less cluttered because I feel like if you cover every inch of them, it starts to not look like a beach. But I did still do a few builds like this smoothie stand and this little seating area. I feel like this is like the tourist spot for my valley. Like if the Instagram influencers were visiting, this is where the photo shoots would be at. Now I was going to go straight to showing this build but Maui was fully blocking it for too long. Um, most of my jump cuts are to get rid of random characters that walk in front of what I'm trying to film. But anyway, this is Moana's house, which is one of my favorite buildings, probably next to Remy's house, which is the best. Um, but this one's a close second. It's really pretty. I love the flowers. And I like putting the little boat next to it. We've got a cute little table here, some little small area builds. And continuing around the side, I use this little green patch as a little picnic spot on the beach. Mostly because I don't really like leaving the weird patches of ground if they're not for something, you know? So I thought I may as well make it useful and not just like a weird splotch in the middle of my nice sand. Um, so it's a cute little picnic spot and you continue around the side here and I've also done that kind of thing with this green patch and it's a little camping spot. So we have some tents and a guitar and a little campfire so you can go and sit around the campfire on the beach. Also I love using the little campfires if you haven't noticed I've used them a couple times but also these logs around them. It's all free. You don't have to buy them from Scrooge. You don't have to craft them. They're just free. How great is that? A little bit of a walk over here. We have Donald's boat. And I've, like a lot of people, I've kind of done it off the pier here. So you can kind of walk over the bridge into the boat, which I think is cute. And if you turn around here, we have a little seating area for Mickey and Donald and their friends. Also, I love these like chairs I love placing them together so they're like a wraparound kind of thing I think that's the cutest for a little outdoor setting I also have my coconut trees back here and you can still access them to harvest the coconuts oh. also over in this area I have covered up one of those glowing things you can see what I'm talking about I forget what they're called someone in the comments let me know someone who's played through the quests more recently than me but this one's hiding behind some waterfalls it's kind of peeking out a little bit there but it's it's sort of pretty like that so I don't really mind and also I couldn't be bothered placing waterfalls all the way around so this is the back end of it and some bananas but we'll pretend there's just a front view and the back view doesn't exist and it can stay pretty now that we've toured the whole right side of my valley we are going to continue over to the left Starting off with the Glade of Trust, which I've kind of done a little bit Tangled themed. I wanted to have this main area like a little market and I'm hoping to find some more stalls and things in the updates to put around the edges here if they let the item limit a little bit more relaxed because I can't place anything else as it is. Um, but we've also got this little clock tower over here and a little seating area, which I think is really cute. And I've also found it to be a really good way to make use of the pond and decorate around it while still being able to use it for fishing. Another thing that kind of bugs me about the game is specifically in the Glade of Trust, if you look at the dirt patches, they've kind of got like mud puddles in them. So I've covered as much of the dirt patches as I can. So you can see to the left where they're uncovered. But over here you can see like I've covered them with pathing and if it's not a brick kind of path then it's the mud path that just looks flat. So you could do that as well if it bugs you as much as it bugs me. Now over here we have Mother Gothel's tree. Um, I kind of wanted to make it more like Rapunzel's tower. So we have a little easel here for her to do some painting and a little lounge area over here for her to read some books and do her hobbies you know. 
I'm not the biggest fan of Mother Gothel, so we are taking her house and pretending it belongs to Rapunzel instead. Or at least for now, until Disney puts the other Tangled characters into the game. If you watched to this point, let me know in the comments what characters you would like to see put into the game in future updates. We have a cute little mini farm. This one is just for decoration, so I am not using these, even though, you know, I could. They're basically my Dreamlight Valley equivalent of decorative pillows or decorative towels. They, they don't get used, they don't have a... They don't really have a purpose other than to sit there and look pretty. Now leaving this area we continue back into the meadow and the one sort of area that I haven't shown you is over on the side. I have the little neighborhood. So first up we have my house which I am waiting for the update so that I can make it pink because I saw on Twitter that 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 is going to be a part of the update is we can change our house color and then over here we have the little Mickey Mouse village. Now I think this is actually possibly the prettiest area in my valley. This is this is probably the one that I've been most happy with and it's the one that I did probably first before anything even though I moved it around a little bit. First up on the left we have Mickey's house and we have a lot of red and orange yellow kind of items to match his house and, and then we have Minnie's house and I thought these cherry trees were just really a perfect colour match. And then finally on the right we have Goofy's house and just over here you'll see a little path to the mining rock over here. Now all of these rocks are accessible, some of them take a little bit of manoeuvring and squeezing between different items that I've placed, but I can still access all of them so I can still get all of my gems and things. We're definitely very cluttered, very full, but we're still functional. Now continuing on to the sunlit plateau, I really wanted to keep to the Lion King kind of feel. Um, but that being said, I kicked Scar out because I think this is prettier without him. And honestly, of all the Lion King characters, same as Tangled. Of all the Tangled characters, why do they always have to give us the evil sassy one? Like Scar's okay, but he's not a first choice. Anyway, we have a cute little lounging area here where I kicked him out. Um, doesn't it look so pretty? And we've got some candles and we've got the little Moana pool. And I think it looks really pretty if you look at it from the outside facing inwards. As long as you don't go too far in because then you've got the dark Forgotten Lands lighting which you can't see anything in and nothing looks as nice. So yeah, it looks good from the outside. Over here we have a little outdoor cooking area and some seating. So over here we've got these benches which I'm so happy to get. There are so many items I'm still waiting for to pop up in those green chests because I'm convinced that there are some that they, they only come in the green chests like Scrooge just never has them. Down the path here I also wanted to set up a little marketplace. Speaking of the green chests, I eventually got these wooden fruit stands in one of the green chests and I'm I really do have a theory that they can only come in those like I I've never seen it in the store so let me know if you have because I'd be very interested to know if it's an item you can only get from the chests or if there are some people who actually have gotten it in their store and my Scrooge is just extra rude <laughs> Before we go straight ahead and cross the bridge, we are going to sneak in through this little secret path here. And if you follow along the little gaps in the trees, you will come to Eric's castle. Which, to decorate, I individually moved all of these little clumps of flowers from the Forgotten Lands. Because I feel like they look better here anyway, but that didn't stop them from spawning there as well. Oh well. We have a nice little flower path leading up to the side of the castle, so I'm really happy with that. I think it looks very pretty. It's essentially the Dreamlight Valley version of the Animal Crossing wheat field. But if you do think of trying this yourself, I will warn you that each of those individual flower items count as an item, like each. So each one of those counts towards your item count, which is probably why mine is so high. Going back down the path that we just came from and round the side, 
over the bridge and we will come to Wally's garden. Now, while I do love this, I do think Wally's house is a bit of an eyesore, like the big orange truck thing. So I have hidden it here somewhere. So if you've spotted it, let me know. I also really like these trees over in the distance here. They remind me of like Madagascar. I've also hidden Scar's house behind them. I basically just hide all the villagers' houses I think are ugly, which is probably not very neighborly, but whatever. And then finally we come to the Forgotten Lands. Um, I know a lot of people went with a kind of Nightmare Before Christmas theme or something a little bit spooky, but I personally really hope that it's going to be Cinderella in the pumpkin house. So that is what I've decorated for. I did a quick little outfit change because, well, I probably should have before, but definitely for this area, I think it would be very pretty in a little Cinderella dress. We have a cute little gazebo here, which I guess could be kind of representative of like, oh, going to the ball. I don't know. It's just pretty. Um, over here, we have my pumpkin patch. This I actually do use. I actually do harvest these and sell them. I have exactly 132 pumpkins here. And I know that figure because of how many times I've had to buy them. Now, one thing I've found with the Forgotten Lands is putting some form of lighting, so like candles or street lamps, really helps brighten it up as well as having a path. Um, the other thing I do hate though is the green fires, so I'm hoping we'll be able to get rid of those soon. But in the meantime, I have covered mine and kind of camouflaged them a little bit into the bushes, so I've done the best that I can do. You'll also see the little clock tower over on the left. Now that is placed directly on top of the Dreamlight Fountain. I think that's what it's called. It's the one with the red fire on the top of it. And I saw somewhere on a Dreamlight Valley Facebook group that I'm in um, that you can place them on top of each other and they like go through each other. Um, so I don't know who that was, but if it was you, please let me know. And thank you so much because it's so pretty. Anyway, I am really looking forward to the new update. I will have a lot of redecorating to do once it comes out, but I'm really looking forward to the new characters and hopefully new items and eventually finding out what this pumpkin house really is. So let me know your theories, what you think, whether it's going to be Cinderella or somebody else. But that brings me to the end of the full tour of my Dreamlight Valley so far. I hope you liked these builds and that they gave you inspiration for your own valley. It is good to be back. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!